Fergal Riley, director of the Angry Birds movie. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. How are you? Thank you, Rory. Pleasure to be here. Um, first movie, Angry Birds movie, three billion downloads, I think, was what I read. Any pressure <laughs> knowing everyone <laughs> in the world has, uh, has heard of this game? Um, there is a, a little bit of pressure, um, but, but uh, you know, it's good pressure because um, uh, it's, it's, it's brilliant to be able to sort of have your brand already known mm -hmm. and sort of uh, an idea of the brand already known um, before you release your, your film to the public. And also it gives you the opportunity to change expectations, which uh, we're looking forward to do with, with, with Angry Birds. Well, you've got um, like that, that cast list. Like I had to I had to write it down because I couldn't memorize every, every everyone on there. But like you've got some fantastic actors. Yes. You've got some fantastic comedians. Yeah. Uh, you've got John Vitti, who most people would know from The Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. So you've got something of a safety net already. But then on the other side, a lot of people would argue we have yet to have a good movie based on a video game. Yeah. So where on that kind of scale would you find yourself would you like i feel like we're in safe hands or do you feel like you're heading into territory no one's quite managed to conquer just yet um i don't think about that stuff and neither does my um director my co-director clay um we just we just set out to sort of uh we set out uh at the beginning of the project very much like we we would do him on tangled me on you know the movies that i've done Iron Giant in the story department, and uh, we we sort of oftentimes you you work with no premise or or a, just a title or something very simple, and and you're creating not even you don't even have a treatment or a script sometimes, um, and you're creating a story from scratch and characters from scratch like you do with most animated features. So for us that process was very comfortable. Um, we had the advantage the huge advantage of having John, John Vitti as a writer. So he already um, gave us uh, a, great, a great basis to, to sort of springboard the, the movie, the comedy into. And then on top of that, you know, when we cast it, we had a very particular um, type of film that we were, were going for comedically, and we wanted to get the best of the best comedians, and and the great thing about that process is we use these guys as another opportunity to write. You know, um, when we were in the in the recording booth, so you know, um, uh, it, it it was every step of the process was a layering, and it sort of it sort of helped us realize sort of a great the great comedic potential of the of the film. You mentioned your, your co-director there. That's something that a lot of uh, animated movies especially would have. They would have more than one, one director. But could you tell for people who may not know what the difference might be for co-directors as opposed to a solo director? Well, we're actually, we actually share... We're both directors on the same movie. It's not like a director and a co-director. It's mm -hmm. uh, Clay's a director, I'm a director. And we did that because... Um, well, it's very common to, to partner directors on, you know, Zootopia has two, you know, um, Kung Fu Panda has two. Yep. Um, uh, because the, the huge amount of work that's involved in making a, a, a world-class sort of CG animated picture, and in the time we made it, which was two and a half years, um, very fast in terms of the timeline that it takes to make a CG movie of this quality, you know, so... Um, we also made it uh, in in studios in, in Los Angeles and in Vancouver. And so a lot of the time we were splitting our responsibilities between Los Angeles and Vancouver and it was very handy to sort of have your your other half, um, you know, being able to cover if you're, you know, if I'm an editorial, Clay would be, you know, working with the animators and vice versa, you know. Yeah, uh, for, as far as... Video game adaptations go, I guess, um, just real quickly, I can't think, like my favorite one would probably be like Silent Hill because it managed to break away from the, the plot of the game. It kind yeah. of made its own thing a little bit. And thankfully the Angry Birds movie doesn't come with too much, or the Angry Birds game doesn't come with too much of a plot. So you kind of had a, almost a blank slate to work with. Does that help you at all break away from what the dreaded video game adaptation kind of stamp would be? We saw that as a huge advantage to us. Um, 
the the basic premise of the the game uh, is comedic in its nature and it's about a conflict and you know um, just having that and only that gave us the opportunity to 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 have a blue sky and just and just create personalities that we wanted to see and that we thought were funny and a world that was rich a world that we we didn't feel limited by the game at all we felt we felt it was just the very the very beginnings of the DNA for the movie and we sort of we we sort of went free and and Rovio were very uh, they were brilliant about letting us just um, make this your own thing make it you know this is what we created now you create something for us that's special and and you know that was just a breath of fresh air and it meant it took a lot of pressure off you know and it meant that we were able to sort of create the kinds of movies that we you know put all the things that we liked from the movies that we worked on and we liked personally and sort of create something new and special well, even even lately, like especially very lately, it's, I know it's been almost like a continuous new golden age almost for animated movies because off the back of everything that Pixar has done and Disney by themselves have done and every other animated studio in Hollywood seems to be upping their game a lot. Uh, why is it, do you reckon, that uh, you know animated movies are getting back into the conversation for best picture, back into the conversation for best screenplay? You know, people are taking it very, very seriously again, which is obviously fantastic, but it, do, you, do you reckon there's a reason for that lately? I do. I think it's because um, the stakes are so high for, for animated films. They cost, you know, a lot to make, and so they have to be good, you know. Um, and the audience will tell you very quickly if, if they're not on board, you know. So there's a lot of energy put into the to the creation of funny appealing personalities and and a story that uh audiences of all ages will will love um it's 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 an intense process and the pictures are getting it's competitive process so the pictures are getting better and better and the technology is freeing up the filmmakers to try out new things and not be restricted like they were years ago you know um and, you know, um, Disney, DreamWorks, you know, um, Sony Pictures Animation, uh, uh, Leica, they all set very high standards, you know, and so uh, everyone wants to up the ante, you know, and, and I, I think um, uh, even Rovio, for us, Rovio wanted a world-class feature and they were prepared to sort of, um, they were prepared to let us, you know, push push the standard and push things to, to get it to that sort of quality, you know. Fantastic. Fergal Riley, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rory.